Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov on Monday rejected a report by the Washington Post newspaper saying that Russia's president and U.S. president-elect Donald Trump had held a phone call last Thursday as completely untrue and pure fiction. Peskov told his daily conference call with reporters the report was just false information. Asked about whether the Kremlin is expecting an escalation of the conflict in Ukraine, Peskov said, nothing can't be ruled out given that European leaders continue to seek the strategic defeat of our country. He was speaking following reports that French President Emmanuel Macron and UK Prime Minister Keir Starmer are planning to try and convince Washington to allow strikes deep inside Russia with storm shadow missiles. The dynamics of the special military operation are well understood by the military. They understand well what is happening, and, perhaps, it is also important to note that no types of weapons are capable of changing this dynamic, he added. Russian Marines, together with the North Korean military, launched an offensive in the Kursk region, but they suffered losses, according to Forbes. Russian Marines, apparently backed by North Korean reinforcements, threw themselves at Ukrainian positions in Kursk Oblast in western Russia. The agency writes, according to the article Russia's 810th Marine Brigade with North Korean reinforcements that arrived at the front last month was not the only Russian unit to counterattack the Kursk salient, but it may have been the most unsuccessful. As Forbes explains, one of Trump's proposals is for Ukraine and Russia to agree to a ceasefire along the current front line, which includes not only southern and eastern Ukraine, but also Russia's Kursk region. If Trump's plan actually works, and it's a big if, Russia would effectively give up 270 square miles of Russian land in exchange for about 20% of Ukraine. That's 45,000 square miles it would occupy. Forbes writes, noting that Russian dictator Putin would clearly not be happy with this seemingly favorable exchange. As Forbes notes, the Russian 810th Marine Brigade, with North Korean soldiers attached to it, suffered a crushing failure in its attempt to attack the left flank of the Kursk salient. According to the Ukrainian Marine Aerial Reconnaissance Officer Kriegsforscher, cited by Forbes, the 810th Marine Brigade recently received a shipment of 40 BTR H2 wheeled armored personnel carriers to compensate for some of the losses it suffered during its attempts and failures to drive the Ukrainian army out of the Kursk region. Thus, at least 14 BTRs fired at the left flank of the Kursk salient. Ten of them are destroyed or damaged and abandoned, Kriegsforscher says. Analyzing the Russian losses during the offensive, the agency writes that up to 10 soldiers can squeeze into 17-ton vehicles, meaning that the 810th Naval Infantry Brigade could have lost 140 troops in total, although it's likely at least a few escaped their burning BTRs. In turn, Kriegsforscher did not rule out further Russian offensives in the Kursk region. 
As I said before, the left flank and the center will be the hardest places in Kursk Oblast. Kriegsforsche says the Ukrainian military has been holding a foothold in the Kursk region for several months. In late summer, it was reported that the Ukrainian armed forces controlled 100 settlements and captured nearly 600 Russian soldiers. At the end of October, the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine reported that since the beginning of the Kursk operation, Russia had lost 17,819 soldiers, both wounded and killed. Another 700 Russians were taken prisoner. Recently, the command of the Airborne Assault Forces of the Armed Forces of Ukraine reported that since the beginning of the operation in the Kursk region, Ukrainian paratroopers have inflicted losses on Russia of almost 8,000 soldiers. This is equal to 15 Russian battalions.